This is Dana Johnson, and you're watching The Best Practices Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Best Practices Show, where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the country. Today, we're going to have a great show for you. We're going to be talking about the schedule and how you proactively keep that busy with one of our favorites, Dana Johnson. So you do not want to miss this, because if you're thinking about growing your practice, you've got to have a great schedule and you got to have great systems in place. And this is going to be a lot of fun today. Now, a couple show notes. We are shooting this live on Facebook. So as you're watching, if you have questions, add them to the feed, and we'll ask Dana directly while she's on the show um, so you can get the most out of these. And then continue to add questions later on if you have them because, again, we just we want you to get the most out of these. And we are so crazy grateful for all the feedback you know, suggestions for shows. And we've got some of the best clinicians in the world that even scheduled yesterday for our shows coming up in the next couple of weeks. So I'm taking all your suggestions, lining them all up, keep sending them us, sending them to us. We're up over 39,000 followers on Facebook, over 150,000 of you on iTunes. So I just can't thank you enough. Now, my guest today, Data Johnson. Um, Data, you're one of the... Um, you're, you're kind of one of the leaders now out there and you've emerged, you've been around for a while and we've watched you just kind of emerge and now you're a true authority in a lot of the dental practice processes that really guide a great uh, practice. I know who you are. I got a chance to see you most recently at some of the bigger meetings like Texas and things like that. And I'm, I'm just so proud of you for what you, who you become and what you're doing now and you're like you're like our dentrix resident expert period so like stuff we can't figure out i'm like data help us but uh, i know who you are some of our viewers know who you are but we have dental students now watching but if people don't know who dana johnson is can you tell them who who you are thank you kirk oh my gosh yeah and you know in my 25 year dental career um you know i've been in dentistry for a long long time i kind of fell into dentistry accidentally and it has just been an amazing career for me. I just, I love dentistry. And, you know, over my 25 year career, what I have, my mission has evolved into um, a, a voice, an advocate and a resource for all the dental offices in the world. And of course my specialty is Dentrix software. Um, I became a certified Dentrix trainer in 2006. So what, uh, going on my 12th year as a trainer and, and that has just been phenomenal. I mean, um, I love practice management software because I mean, your entire day revolves around your software there, you know, you can't run a dental practice without practice management software. And so that's really become my passion is helping dental teams optimize their software for their practice. And it's just been so much fun. I love it. Yeah. And, you know, and what you've done is you've grown into a, an authority or expert that's bigger on the soft than just the software and a lot of it is systems and thinking. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to be talking about how you can be proactive with your schedule. And the schedule really is where it all happens in a dental yes. practice. And it has to be productive and it has to be full. But you know how I like to do this. Let's talk about the why before we get mm -hmm. into the how and what are you seeing when you look at the schedule and all the dental practices you go to? Well, I think, you know, having holes in the schedule is probably one of the biggest pain points that we see in the office. You know, when you have holes in your schedule, you know, everybody's scrambling, the doctors are stressed out because there's holes, the hygienists, you know, sometimes they don't have anything to do during that hour. And so, you know, it, it puts having holes in the schedule puts a lot of stress on everybody. Um, you know, it, creates a little bit more, um, you know, you know, uh, I don't know, pressure on the admin team to, to fill the schedule, you know, they get pressure from everybody. So, you know, if you, what I feel is if we just kind of turn it around a little bit and do a little bit more effort on the front end, 
we have less work on the back end. And that's kind of where I became in, into this more proactive approach. And it's really, it pays off in, in dividends. It's, it's, a, it's really great. Yeah. And you and I were talking about this. A lot of times holes are, it's reactive, you know, so everyone scrambles when there's a hole and yeah. all the calls go out when there's a yes. hole. But, but you're talking about creating a system where you've got a scheduled outgoing cadence or system of calls. So that never yeah. happens. Give us some philosophy on that. Yeah. Well, I guess I wouldn't say it never happens because right. of course we're still going to get those last minute openings, patients do get sick. You know, we do have emergencies come up in people's lives. But what I do find is if we build a system around phone calls and having a systematic approach to the lists that we have to work, you know, in the practice management software, we have a lot of lists and reports that we need to work on a daily, weekly basis. And, you know, what I find is busy offices, busy admin teams, they get to the end of the day and it's like, oh my gosh, I don't feel like I've done anything today, you know, because I've been answering phones and I've been doing these financial arrangements and all this stuff. And you get to the end of the day or the end of the week and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't feel like I got anything done. And so what I really want to try help my teams do is build in this systematic approach for your phone calls and working these lists because, um, you know, in the software world, we have, you know, we have the the unscheduled list, you know, we have a, a list of patients that have no showed their appointment or they've missed an appointment for some reason, or they need to get in now. And then we have our recare list. We have our continuing care patients that are overdue or they're, you know, uh, not, not responding to our emails or our text messages. So they need a phone call. We have patients that walk out the door without scheduling that treatment, the crown that doctor recommended or the, those fillings that, the patient needs. And so we've got these three major reports that need attention on a regular basis. And what I see a lot of times is the team members are just calling when we have an opening. Um, and then the verbal skills are way different. You know, your the tone of your voice is different. And, and so I like being an advocate for the patient's health and giving them a, like you said, reason for return, um, um, a value added service, a value added reason to come back for their appointment. So I try and build that into the conversation. Yeah. And a couple of things I would say is that what Dana is going to share with us, this is an incredible investment that you do, you make in your team members, because in all fairness, let's just say this out loud, a lot of administrative team members are just thrown into the mix and a dentist says, go, and they go, go where? And they go, just <laughs> do that thing that you do. And then they go back and work on teeth and they're left to this total chaotic yeah. approach to trying to keep the schedule fill when they mm -hmm. don't know what's expected of them. So I just want to say that if you're a dentist watching, we can't throw people like this into the mix. Now, secondly, Dana is going to go through what's called an action plan. And she's been so gracious that she's going to share it. So if you want a copy of this, you can email her at D-A-Y-N-A at N O v o n e e dot com and she'll send this back to you that we're going to go through because we want you to walk away with something tangible like a checklist step by step of the things we're going to discuss so please do that and this podcast will make sense so dana take us through this let's talk about the action plan where do we even start so first thing i would start with is um you know maybe at your next team meeting or maybe just have a little powwow with the hygienist um is one thing you kind of want to have in your arsenal is those value added uh, reasons for the patient to come back in for their next appointment. So this is kind of what I'm talking about. Um, you know, I think that every patient has something that the hygienist or the doctor wants to recheck. Either it's, um, you know, that heavy tartar on the lower anterior, or maybe there's a um, ex ex some extra bleeding on the lower right, or maybe the patient has had a change in their medication that is affecting their oral health. And so I think if the hygienist or the doctor's assistants could make some kind of a little notation in the clinical note about, um, you know, maybe we have a little abbreviation for it, you know, value added reason or VRM or something, you know, um, it's check lower right or reevaluate medications or, um, 
refer for dry mouth or something. I don't know. It could be anything. And, and the admin team can use those little tidbits of information in their verbal skills to get the patient to think, oh yeah, I really do need to get back in and see my dentist. Because a lot of times patients just think, oh, I'm going to get my teeth cleaned. You know, oh, I can do that anytime. But, you know, we have to remember that the dental office, we are the oral health physicians in the world. You know, it's not that we just clean teeth. We check for oral cancer screening. We do blood pressure checks. We do TMJ evaluations. I mean, there is so much that patients don't really understand everything that goes on during their recare visit. And so I think it's really important that the admin team add in those little verbal skills to their conversations with patients, because it's not just you're overdue. It's, you know, we need to get you back in once a year for that oral cancer screening. We need the hygienist really put a note in your schedule in your chart that she's really watching that area on the lower left. Um, and it's really important that you get back on, on your regular schedule. Yeah. That's and- one thing that you can do now is have a little team meeting, a little huddle with your hygienist and say, okay, where can we document these little pieces of information and how admin team can we incorporate these value added reasons into our verbal skills? Yeah. Now I want to piggyback on that because what you said earlier was so important. The value added piece that you're putting in, that's going to start with the clinical person first because And again, all fairness to the administrative team member, they don't often know what's been communicated and back and they've got 90 processes going on at the same time. So it's it's almost unrealistic for the administrative person to take this on. So, and you mentioned clinical notes. Can you explain why when you put this value added RFR, you have to put it in the clinical notes, especially in softwares like Dentrix and Eaglesoft. And can you tell us why? Yeah, because, you know, I think that the admin team needs one specific place to find it. You know, if they're searching for this information, it's going to be harder for them to, um, you know, get it quickly. And because when they have a patient on the phone, um, they need to go quickly to the clinical note, maybe find it. Maybe it's the last line on the, the last clinical note. So make sure it's in a consistent place. And with Dentrix or Eaglesoft or any of the other practice management softwares where you can template your notes, you could add a new question that it might be, you know, reason for return and or value or, you know, something, just name it something. And it could be the very last line. And then maybe you just have a checkbox list. I mean, there's got to be some, a lot of things are very common, you know, in the dental industry. So maybe it's a checkbox list. Maybe it's a little text box. They could write something in, but getting the clinical team to add that into their notes will be extremely helpful for the admin team when they're having these conversations with patients. Right. And uh, another thing that you said too, is that, you know, it can't be for a cleaning, you know, that's a terrible reason to have a patient come back. And so now think about this as a patient too. If I call your office and an administrative team member answers the phone and you're talking to me about me saying, Hey, look, you got some bleeding on the lower left. You, I'm sure, are you sure you want to miss this appointment? Because you got this coming up. I'm like, Oh my gosh, you people really know who I am. So exactly. it's got to be bigger than the actual procedure itself. Yes. Right. I agree with you hundred percent, you know, because if a patient is trying to cancel an appointment or reschedule or whatever, um, go back to that same place on the clinical note and see, and have that conversation with the patient. You know, it looks like, you know, you've had a change in your medications. We want to make sure that that's not affecting your oral health in any negative way. Um, and so definitely you're going to use that information a lot. And it's just, it's such a huge piece that the admin team really hasn't used before, but um, I think it's, it's very um, important. Yeah, absolutely. Dana, I could not applaud you more for this because this is one of my favorite things. And you want to make sure as a dental care provider, your practice, it either screams I care or I don't care. And Dana, what you're talking about, the systems that you teach scream, we care and we know who you are. So um, make sure that that's consistent. Now, what's the next step in our action plan after we've had a conversation with the team about the value add RFRs? Well, then you need to look at okay, how are you going to map this out in your schedule? You know, so look at, make sure you find what are those two, three, four reports in your software 
that have to be maintained on a daily, weekly basis. And then make sure that where you're documenting your follow-up notes with the patients is consistent across all team members. And okay. if you have multiple team members on your, on your admin team that are making calls to patients that you can see, um, you know, Jenny can see Susie's notes and Susie can see Tammy's notes, you know, so it's important that not only you're calling patients, but you're also can see the previous note, you know, so you could see, say something like, oh yeah, hey, this is Dana. It looks like Jenny called you a couple of weeks ago. I'm just checking back in. Um, so consistency is also key in this, in this system. But like, how do you map out your week? I mean, because, you know, I've, I've worked in the front desk. I, I know how much work there is to do at the front desk. And at the end of the day, you get to the end of the day and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like this day just flew by and I didn't get right. anything done. And so what I like to do is, um, you know, hopefully your full team is you're doing a morning huddle. Hopefully you're doing a morning huddle every day with the, the whole team and you're talking about the day and you're looking for opportunities and you're looking to where the emergency time is going to be. But after that full team huddle, then what I'd like is the admin team to do their own huddle. So they go back up to the front desk and maybe you have two or three or four people that are on the admin team. And now I'd like for you to do your huddle. And so, you know, if, if Jenny is doing continuing care calls and, you know, Susie's the financial coordinator and she's got accounts receivable calls to make, you know, everybody has calls to make. And, and so we also need what I call off the floor time. And so everybody needs this off the floor time so they can get some calls done and have some captive time, some real solid, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one time with those patients, you know, where you're not at the front desk, you're not on the front line and you can really have some quality time with patients. And so, you know, Jenny might say, you know, I really need 30 minutes today and it looks like I can do that between 1045 and 1115. Mm -hmm. so Jenny's going to be off the floor for that 30 minutes. And then, you know, Susie will say, okay, well, I need 45 minutes to an hour to make my call. So it looks like I'm going to be off the floor from two to three o'clock. Is that good with everybody? And yeah. then I'll share that extra effort of making sure that the phones are being covered and that, you know, Susie can get covered while she's making her calls, because that's really important to get that, that quality time with, with making calls off your list. Yeah. And can I ask you a couple questions? Cause this is so good. So if you're doing a morning huddle, which is probably how long do you want a morning huddle for the team to be 15 minutes, 20 minutes? Yeah. 15, yeah 10 to 15 minutes for the full team huddle. Okay. Usually, that's usually a good time. And then so if you start seeing patients, you know, um, at 7 a.m., um, so get the, t get the patients checked in. Um, and then as soon as all the patients are checked in and, and everything, then do like a five-minute morning huddle with the admin team. Okay, good, because I'm trying to get my brain around how we would do that if we are transitioning to patients right away, which is a great yeah. thought. Get everybody started, then yep. five minutes. Now, you mentioned two to three reports. Now, every... I know it's not standard, but can you give us your favorites? Because I, everyone gives me theirs, and I have a list of like ninety of them now. But what are your two to three reports that you like on a weekly basis that admin team members have to do? Yes. So one of them is called, um, well, it's an unscheduled list. So in the Dentrix world, it's called the unscheduled list, and it is a fantastic resource for um, finding patients who have already been on the schedule. So maybe they've missed an appointment. Maybe they came in today and they had their crown prepped and they still need a seat appointment and they don't schedule their seat appointment, you know? And so you need a place, you need a holding spot for that appointment. So you have this short unscheduled list, you know, it's, it shouldn't be very long. It probably should hold maybe eight to 12 weeks worth of missed appointments. You know, don't, don't let it get massively huge. And then another list is your recare list and, you know, your overdue patients that are due for recare. Now in the Dentrix world, it's called the continuing care report. Um, and, you know, I've, I also have tip sheets specifically on that if people want it, but um, there's a couple different ways you can run that report in the Dentrix system. So if you're on 
EagleSoft or another practice management software, find out where your recall or recare report is. Now, it's important that you marry that report with your automated system because most practices are using some kind of automated system. Um, it may be demand force, it may be uh, solution reach, you know, it might be Lighthouse, but you're using some kind of automated system for text messages, emails, maybe robocalls. And so you kind of have to marry that system with your phone calls. So, you know, your verbal skills may be a little bit different if the patient has been ignoring maybe those emails and things. And then the third report that needs attention to keep your schedule full is the patients who have an unscheduled treatment. So they walk out the door without scheduling the crown, the uh, scaling or replaning or the, you know, fillings, the treatment that the doctor has recommended or the, the uh, perio therapy that the hygienist was, has recommended and the patient leaves without scheduling. So now you have this unscheduled treatment report. Um, in the Dentrix world, it's called the treatment manager. So uh, find out what it is in your software and make sure that somebody is working that report on a regular basis. Yeah, and I love this. And what you're suggesting is don't try to get to these. You have scheduled time to pay attention to each one of these on a weekly basis. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. So I want you to be making phone calls to patients and following up with them, whether or not you have openings in your schedule. And, you know, I have some offices, they're like, well, we can't put them in for, you know, four to six weeks. And I'm like, fantastic. You still need to call these patients. Because at some point in time, you're going to have holes in your schedule. If you wait until you have a hole in your schedule, then the whole verbal skills change. And, and the, 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 your voice changes when you are calling to try and fill an appointment rather than just being their caregiver and following up with them. Because you know that, that getting into the dentist on a regular basis is good for their health. You know, so there's a completely different verbal skill there or verbal language, you know, the way the patient hears it is different. And so, yes, I want you to call these reports on these reports on a regular basis, whether or not you have holes in your schedule or not. Yeah. And I think what you're saying is so important because we watch these people make these calls and it's a desperate call. Like it's a needy, <laughs> desperate call. And yeah. what you're talking about, you and I were talking about this before we went live. It's the attitude about the call. You know, it's yeah. the tone. It's the confidence you, yeah. when you schedule this, it's coming out in a very confident, consistent manner instead <laughs> of a desperate approach. And those language skills sound different when they're received yes. on the other and side. We're, and we're going to talk about verbal skills next. So, okay. um, and, and we're going to go through some samples and things like that. But right now it, it is about um, mapping it out in your daily, weekly schedule, you know, so as an admin person, I know that I have certain accountabilities to my practice and it's my job and, and I hold that accountability to make sure that patients are not falling through the cracks. Mm -hmm. And if I don't schedule those calls and that time, that one-on-one -on -one time to get on the phone with my patients, it's not going to get done. And I also recommend that during your time that you have um, get off the floor. So go to a consult room or ask the doctor if you can use their office or something like that. So you're not being bothered from other team members. And so you, if you're a one person show at the front desk, this is going to be a little bit more challenging, but um, see if you can um, see if your clinical team might be able to pick up the phones for you for 30 minutes um, or ask your doctor if it's okay if the if the phone calls go to voicemail for 30 to 45 minutes. I know a lot of people don't like to do that, but but it's so important to work these systems that um, I feel it's I feel it's okay, you know. Um, wait, wait. Let me speak to the <laughs> let me let me speak to the obvious. Like, wait, are you suggesting clinical team members pick up the phone? Whoa, 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 whoa. You're I know. creating havoc here. Like you know, I, I, no, 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 no. Like people, like people are probably freaking out that you even just said that. Can oh you gosh, no. That? Yeah, in my practice that I worked in, I had amazing dental assistants in my in my practice. So if our phone rang four times at the front desk, 
it would then ring in the back in the lab. And because usually we had dental assistants in the lab or they were, you know, turning rooms over. And if they heard the phone ring in the back, they knew that we were busy. And so my dental assistants would pick up the phone and they would probably take a message, but at least it was a human answering the phone. And um, at least we were able to take care of the patient um, in that, at that point in time and, and at least take a message and just say, you know, you know, Dana's with a patient right now. Is it okay if she calls you right back? Um, you know, we also have um, many off- I was in an office a couple of weeks ago and their um, insurance coordinator and their financial coordinator both work in offices in the back in the back room they're not on the front line and so the gals at the front desk were like we're just overwhelmed with phone calls and i'm like well why isn't the phone in their offices ringing (laughs) and they're like well we don't know and i'm like well number one is we need to get that phone ringing in the back room so you know just schedule like if your phone rings three times at the front desk have it ring in another location in the practice um your team they're there to help you and you know, it's a, it, this is a, a team, you know, we're a dental team. We're not single individual people, people here. So definitely um, see if you can make that happen with your phone system in your practice. Yeah. And what Dana's saying is so important because I've seen this too, is that I get it when you're one person up at the front and there's a lot going on, you're going to start to use the word chaos. It's out of control. There's so much going on. And what you have to do is you got to get away from that thinking and say, look, how do we create systems? Because when you're in a chaotic environment like that, you're only thinking, I need more people. And now Uh you start throwing people at problems. And before you got it, you got four people managing chaos. And Dana, what you're saying is create a system first. And then obviously, as you get busier, you're going to add another person to the system. And you're going to see it's just so much more calming when you think like that. And I love the rollover to the back. I love it. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. Yeah. Let's yeah. L- let's talk about verbal skills. Like this let's is this is like the hardest one because people are like, oh my gosh, well throw me throw me some, you know, throw me some good think thinking on, on verbal skills. Yeah. So you know, here's here's the reactive conversation. You know, so first let's let's talk about kind of how people are doing it now. Um, you know, I see this a lot. Um, you know, it's, um, and this is all on the action plan. So these are all uh, available on the sheet. So, you know, when you're doing a, um, a a reactive call, it might be something like, you know, Hey, Jenny, this is Dana. Um, you are, you know, you're severely overdue for your cleaning and we have an opening in our schedule tomorrow morning. Are you available? You know, there is, there is no value to that call whatsoever. You know, the patient has already seen your emails, your text messages, the patient already knows they're overdue, you know? So for you to just throw that into their face, you're severely overdue. um, It just kind of, it put the patient's now gonna put up the shield and say, you know, I already know I'm overdue, stop reprimanding me. Um, And no, I'm not gonna do you a favor by filling that appointment you have tomorrow morning. So, um, you know, that kind of a phone call happens a lot in practices because you know, we are just crazy trying to fill the schedule. And, um, and so a reactive phone call like that, it, it just really doesn't work well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what you're suggesting is give, give us the other side of it. What would a strong, confident, systematic approach to filling the schedule sound like? Yeah. So then we want to do something like, so if you're going to, like I said a couple minutes ago, if you're going to marry your um, automated system with your call, phone call system, you know, what I would do is maybe have that your uh, dashboard up and see that the patient has been receiving emails. And, you know, so the conversation might be something like, you know, hey, Jenny, this is Dana from Dr. Johnson's office. You know, I realize you've probably been receiving our emails from our automated system. And I'm just calling because, you know, you are overdue, but I'm looking back in the notes from your last visit and we're watching that upper right area, uh, that molar, it looks like there's a small crack in that tooth and that I know the doctor's been watching it. Um, I just want to see how that's doing. Are you feeling okay? Um, You know, and then pause. And then the patient may say something like, oh, you know, it's not really bothering me. and then you're, you, you know, you may say something like, well, you know, sometimes cracks in teeth don't hurt, 
but there could be something going on in that area that you may not be aware of. So that's why it's really important that Dr. Johnson see you so that we can just double check that that tooth is still sound. Um, I know your hygienist would love to see you. So uh, when's a good time for you? You know, so when you have that kind of conversation with the patient, um, it's way different. Yeah, that, I heard that significantly different the second time than the first time. So that is awesome. Now, I always get this question too. I'm sure you get this one. I get it all the time. Dana, I love that. But how do I get them on the phone in the first place? Do you get that <laughs> one at all? Gosh, um, sometimes I think um, that, you know, we just need to make sure that we have good phone numbers that we're calling mobile phones. You know, I mean, I am tied to my mobile phone, just like everybody else. And I think it's just important, you know, we can also use um, a lot of systems nowadays have two way text messaging. Um, you know, uh, Solution Reach has their um, community, their text back and forth. And I know um, the Dentrix Essential has the text back and forth. So sometimes you can initiate the conversation with a text with the patient and say, Hey, I really want to talk to you. Um, your hygienist is asking about you. You know, sometimes if you turn it around to not, I'm trying, I'm not trying to fill an opening, but Claire, your hygienist came up to me today and wondered where you've been, you know, or the doctors when, you know, was thinking about you and wondering where you've been, he's, he's worried about you. So, um, you know, if you kind of throw that out and, and of course get the permission from your hygienist or your doctor to use that, that language, um, then that can be really effective, really powerful for that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, and that's on treatment. Now, um, give us an example, like, let's talk about verbal skills for the, um, recare list. Cause that's a big one. That's, uh -huh. would you, would you agree? That's probably the number one phone call we're yes. going to be making. Yes. Um, in comparison, that would well, be I, th I, th I think that, you know, we have to remember that um, recare, continuing care is the lifeblood of your practice. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's the heartbeat of the practice. And because all the doctor schedule is filled from the hygiene schedule. And so we want to make sure that patients are not falling through the cracks. So typically the recare is um, the highest priority as far as um, making sure that patients are coming in during their regular scheduled time. Um, and, and so that's usually the, the biggest list that you're calling. It's usually there's the most people on that list. Now, when I work the treatment report, like the unscheduled treatment report, I'm recommending that my admin team is only calling off treatment that's real current. Right. So it's been added to their treatment plan within the last five or six months. Okay. I, I don't have them calling back on treatment from a year ago or two years ago. It's such a waste of time. So call off treatment that's super current um, because once the treatment plan hits, you know, six months past due, they're due to come in for their recare. So then the conversation is let's get them back into the recare system um, so if a patient, if a recare patient walks out the door without scheduling treatment, then I want the admin team following up for those next five months or so. But then once the patient's overdue for their hygiene visit, then they start working the continuing care list. Does, right. that, does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Now, okay. what if I'm a new admin team member and I'm trying to hold the delicate balance between confirming patients and working the recare list? Can you give me some thoughts on that? Because I'm calling patients. What do you recommend we call patients in advance on the reminding list or, you know, confirming list, whatever. And then how do you balance that between the recare list of people that don't have a scheduled appointment for recare? I mean, any thoughts? Because I get those questions too. Yeah. And I mean, hopefully your automated system is confirming maybe about 50% of your appointment book. Yeah. So probably making calls to maybe about, you know, 50% of their patients. And if you're a, if you're a sync solo practitioner, you know, you may have 40, 50 patients in your schedule. So there's about 20, 25, maybe 30 calls to make. Um, you know, if you're a large practice, it's different, but um, you know, so definitely you're confirming patients. Now, what I like to do is, you know, I'm not a huge fan of confirming. I'm more of a, um, 
this is a, you know, we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Um, doctor is very excited to see you. It's been a while. Or, you know, this is Dana, Dr. Johnson's office. We're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, click. You know, I don't say call to confirm. You know? Yeah, now tell us why. Tell us why. Because I love what you just said. Just say, tell us the why behind that. Because I, I love where you're going. So, well, let's back up actually to when you're actually making the appointment. So here's what I like to say when you're actually making the appointment is, you know, this appointment is a confirmed appointment. You know, we're reserving this time with your hygienist and we consider this appointment already confirmed. You will not be getting a confirmation call. You may get a courtesy reminder, but letting the patient know that it's confirmed on the day that they schedule it is important. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so when you're calling, it's not necessarily a confirmation call. It's a courtesy call. We're really looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, you know, we're looking forward to, to showing off our new technology. We've got a new x-ray machine, you know, since you've been here or something like that. Make it fun. Um, and it's not a confirmation. It's just a courtesy. Um, right. Because confirm implies, are you coming? Exactly. And what you're suggesting is we know you're coming. I'm yeah. just reminding you that yeah. we're excited to see you tomorrow, right? We're excited to see you tomorrow. Um, because if it's, if it's a confirmation, you're giving them an out and mm -hmm. we don't want to give them an out at all. Um, so I mean, courtesy calls, if you want to call them confirmation calls, they shouldn't be take very long um, because you're just calling them on their, um, their recommended phone number. You know, they've given you their, best number to reach them more than likely you are going to get a voicemail um and or some kind of a, a of a voice system because you know i if i don't recognize the number i don't always pick it up either and i you know i'm i'm guilty of that so most of the time you're getting a voicemail or something so if patients need to then call back oh gosh that's exhausting you know you just don't want to put that burden on on patients um so I don't know. I think I got sidetracked or something. No, no, no. It's easy to get sidetracked, but I love the, you know, the ins and outs of these, these always pop up and they're legitimate questions that team members yeah. have because they've never had any formal training in how to deal with this. And so they yeah. only do what they know or what's been taught to them, which always, right. maybe not always the greatest thing. And that's why yeah. these educational, I love yeah. these so much because you're an expert, yeah. you're out there seeing this and you know, it's effective. You well, know. and it's, it's so true that that if you have a new team member that's coming in, a lot of times they're just going to bring their habits or their systems from their previous office. And you have no idea what those bad habits might be. And so it's really important that you have some kind of onboarding system for those new team members. That's that's a whole nother, um, you know, podcast on onboarding. But um, if you're using a third party software make sure that you have training for that new team member on how to use that dashboard because that is your gateway to the patients as far as emails, text messages, and things like that. So um, a lot of these third-party softwares are able to do two-way text now and patients will respond to a text message a lot faster than they'll respond to a phone call. Yeah. Um, so definitely learn how to do that in your practice. And I would really encourage you to have what is your recommended form of communication? You know, what is the best way to reach to reach you? Mm -hmm. And um, because if you're not reaching out to them with their best form of communication, then you you could be missing the boat. You know, and and patients really want to. It's so funny. You know, we just don't talk to humans anymore. I mean. It's just, it's just weird, but you know, that's just who we are now. You know, we do kiosks at McDonald's now and, and, you know, we, we don't talk to people anymore. It's, it's weird. So, um, but you know, when you do have to pick up the phone, um, you probably will get a voicemail. Uh, so it's important just to say something like, you know, this is Dana, at Dr. Johnson's office. We're really looking forward to seeing you. Um, I know it's been a while since you've been in. Dr. Johnson was asking about you this morning, so I thought I'd give you a call. Um, please call me back so we can get you in our schedule. Um, you know, it's something quick like that. Now, if you're leaving a voicemail or a voice message, then you, you don't want to say anything too 
specific about their health, you know, because I did talk about those ver- those value added reasons to getting them back in to see their hygienist. Now you mm-hmm. don't want to leave something like, you know, we're checking that bleeding area on the lower right. Don't leave that on a voicemail because you just don't ever know who's going to pick up that voicemail. Right. Yeah. And so make sure that you are personally talking to a patient if you are going to use those kinds of um, tidbits from your hygienist or your your doctor. With those yeah, that's a very important point. What are some other action items that we need to be proactive with our schedule when it comes to the outgoing systems? Um, did we talk about the patients that have unscheduled treatment? Well, we talked a little bit about the RFRs, okay. but take us through a systematic approach of unscheduled treatment. How would we approach that? Unscheduled treatment. Um, so, you know, like I said, uh, reach out to patients who have unscheduled treatment that's very current within the last five or six months. Um, you know, so the conversation would be something like, um, you know, hey, Jenny, this is Dana, Dr. Johnson's office. Um, you know, we saw you a couple weeks ago and doctor had recommended that treatment on the lower right. Um, I'm just following up to see if you had any questions about that, that I might be able to answer for you. Mm-hmm. It's not that I have an opening in my schedule. It's about, do you have any questions about the treatment that Dr. Johnson recommended for you? Is there anything I could help answer? Mm-hmm. Now, then it opens up the door. It's an open-ended question. Um, you know, that, you know, maybe she does have questions about it. Um, you know, it's not really hurting. Do I really need to get in? Um, you know, then you can go back and look at the notes. Well, it looks like there is decay underneath that crown. And sometimes, you know, we don't have pain in that area until it's too late. And I'd hate for you to lose that tooth once it's too late. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I think what I would, What I would try and do is kind of go back to what we were talking about um, first off in our call is having like a team meeting with your clinical team on what's going to be some of the best verbal skills for talking about this clinical information Um, and really maybe making up some note cards um, and just having kind of some um, verbal skills written down, you know, if the patient asks this, you know, then go into this conversation, you know, so trying to, you know, I hate, I don't want to say scripts, but it is nice to have some kind of a scripted guideline that can help you help you through the call. Yeah, absolutely. And what you're talking about, we love that. And we actually, you know, I'm such a fan of what you just said, Dana, because we call it clinical calibration among the team. What a great exercise to do as a team is maybe take your 10 top procedures and do exactly what Dana suggested, which is a card. And we're going to talk about the benefits of each one of these procedures because, again, team members don't know often what you're saying clinically. And from a business standpoint, it's very important that everyone's calibrated around yeah. what we do, why we do what we do, and we're all saying the same thing. Now, that's the responsibility of the business owner and then the team members to calibrate that. And so I love it. I think it's awesome. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So, no. A lot of admin team members are very comfortable talking about clinical procedures um, because, you know, they do treatment plan presentations and things like that. Or sometimes dental assistants move up to the front desk. And in that situation, that's fantastic because they're very comfortable talking about clinical information. And um, but definitely get everybody on the same page with, you know, if you're calling about continuing care and the patient asks about this, okay, then you go into this, this conversation. If you're calling on unscheduled treatment and they say, oh, you know, I just, I don't have the money right now. Okay. Well then what do we talk about? Well, have we talked to you about care credit? You know, um, have we talked to you about outside financing? Um, You know, so, um, you know, just trying to have these levels of um, answers, you know, and, and of course, you're not going to get everybody to say yes, but you definitely should have something other than, well, okay, I'll call back in a couple of weeks. You know, you should have at least another level of conversation to ask or ask the next question, you know, ask the next question. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know what you're saying, Dana, is true, because if you're a team member and you get really good at this, you're going to run into capacity <laughs> issues where you're going to be like, hey, Dana told me to make all these calls, but now I got nowhere to put these patients and just realize that's a good problem. Do you know what I mean? That's a really good. Yeah. You want to you want to keep working the system till you have the good problem. Is that what we're suggesting? Absolutely. You know, and, and I do have offices that are plateaued. They're maxed out on capacity and you know, they're booked out for four or six months and they have no room for chairs. And then you have to, then you have to have a new conversation. You know, right. how, do, how do we deal with this capacity issue? You know, maybe it's dropping PPO plans or maybe it's, um, you know, working extended hours or something. So, you know, those are, those are different conversations, but um, don't worry about the capacity. It's, it's your job um, to follow up with patients because you are their oral health physician. And it's, it's your responsibility to, you know, for their making sure that you are at least reaching out. Now, it's not your responsibility to, to, you know, say yes to treatment, but at least you're doing your part to let them know the consequences of not doing the treatment. Yeah, absolutely. And any other thoughts on the action plan that you have? Uh, or um, so one thing um, that I will add on to the capacity issue is, um, Yes, if you are scheduling patients out farther than, you know, a few weeks, um, make sure that anytime you're scheduling a patient out or they're already overdue, your next question is, is it okay if I call you if we get something earlier? Yes, love because that. Then, because then you also want to keep building your ASAP list. Yep. And, you know, the ASAP list is the, is the list for filling those short-term openings. It's not the other three that I talked about. The ASAP list is, is there because patients have already been prompted and have already agreed to a call if you have a short-term opening, a short notice opening. So, so if you are scheduling patients out three, four, six weeks, or maybe three, four, five months, the next question is, is it okay if I call you if the doctor gets something sooner? Yeah. See, and what you're doing is you're creating this this uh, scarcity thing for me. People always want what they can't have, and it's no different than a restaurant. My favorite restaurant yeah. saying, "Hey, I got I got one table." And it's <laughs> exactly. I'm like, ah, I want. It. I know. You know so I know. It's amazing exactly. how much people want what they seem to not be able to get or can't have. So I love what you're saying on this. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Dana, I know you know. There's so many topics like. This is so good. And you and I are going to cover a whole bunch of them. But um, I know people are going to want more of you and they're going to want to know, how do I get your action plan? So I, for the benefit of people that are listening on iTunes that might, might not be watching this, can you describe where to get that action plan um, and what they're going to see in the action plan? Yeah. So it's a three-page action plan. Um, main, many of the things we talked about today, there's all these verbal skill um samples that the, that you can use and you know use them up it's just a pdf file i'll send it to you in a pdf um email me directly it's probably the fastest way to get it um is uh like you said dana d-a-y-n-a at navoni n-o-v-o-n-e-e -E dot com yeah now you do a lot of de do you still do dentrix training for people oh yeah Mm -hmm. do. Okay. So yeah. if I'm a, if I'm a doctor and I have Dentrix and I'm kind of struggling with this, I can reach out to you and you can probably help me, you yes. know, understand this a little bit better. Yeah. I do Dentrix training. We have the Navoni community, which okay. is um, more of a self-guided um, webinar, on-demand webinars, live webinars, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, that's also available too for just a monthly membership fee. So lots of ways for that I can help. You are awesome. You're always a huge help. And like I said, we're going to have you back so many times for other things because I love your expertise behind what's happened, what happens at such a special position up front. Now, if you're watching this and there's things that you want to see from Dana in the future, questions that you have, continue to add them to the feed and I'll just line Dana up for shows and we'll ask her those questions again because we're going to provide solutions to some of the biggest problems you have by just bringing you the experts. And if you're struggling with this, I'm just going to tell you, just reach out to Dana herself and she'll help you more than anything. And she's awesome at that. And her information is going to be listed on there. So Dana, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for this. I just, every time you're on, I, I just learned so much. I appreciate all of your expertise. So thank, thanks for having me. It was super fun. 
Yeah, absolutely. And so thank you. Stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for watching the Best Practices Show. I'm so grateful and uh, love all the comments and feedback we're getting. And Lori Owens just commented, this is amazing stuff. Lori's just awesome. I know, so, I love her. Uh, she's great. So um, if you guys enjoyed today, watching the show, do us a favor. Just hit the share button, share it with your friends, and help this great profession we call dentistry uh, so much. And until we see you next time, keep watching the best practice show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.